fun. Thank you all for joining us for the interview with Father Michael. I just want to make a short announcement, obviously, that the views expressed by Father Michael are his own and not necessarily mine. Uh, I, I thought it's important to point that out. I think also it is important to point out that the reason why I personally allow um, views I not necessarily agree with on this channel is because I truly believe that there, if, if there is to be any reunification between the old believers and what I, what I consider the church, there is a need to truly understand each other, understand where we are coming from. And that's why I think the best way to do that is to actually talk to each other and listen to each other and to listen to people's own stories about themselves. I think that's the only way moving forward. Um, so that's why I am very open to have these discussions, even if uh, me and Father Michael obviously would probably disagree on a lot of things. Yet all is done in respect and love. And I hope it will stay that way always on this channel. Thank you and enjoy the interview with Father Michael. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Um, today, we have a special, special episode for you. Uh, we're actually doing our first interview, uh, which is something we've been talking about for quite a while. And the basic idea for us has been that we really want people to tell us about themselves and their churches and their faith uh, by themselves and not us just trying to research them. Uh, I, I personally believe that's the only way for real dialogue of respect. Uh, so today uh, we have our first guest, who is a priest of the Russian ancient Orthodox Old Believer Church. Um, it's Father uh, Michael Stefanov. He's a priest of the uh, Pokrov Cathedral in Moscow City, in the middle of Moscow, beautiful church. And he, he's a master of theology. Uh, and he will today speak about his, his community, his church, uh, and then ho hopefully we'll have a good discussion and some interesting questions. But first and foremost, I will allow him to introduce himself and then speak about his, about his community. Welcome, Father Michael. Uh, hello, hello, Philip. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for inviting me for your uh, podcast. Uh, so uh, first, I, will, uh, I have some words about history and teaching of uh, church that I represent here. It's a, a Russian ancient uh, Orthodox Church. Uh, so uh, I, uh, I, will, I will now speak uh, in, of, on the time about the time of uh, Rasko, yes, and uh, I will speak about uh, years uh, later. Uh, something years after the schism in the Russian Church, ancient Orthodox Christians faced yet big problem. Priests who were ordained before the schism died. Christian at the time had no bishops loyal to the ancient Orthodox faith. Uh, thus, nobody was available to order new priests and, and uh, deacons. Then, using the multi century experience of the ancient church, which was an acceptance of priests who were ordained by heretical or schismatic bishops in some uh, exceptional, especially uh, considered cases, it was ruled to accept priests in the current rank who decided to join the ancient order of the church from the new Ruta uh, church. Uh, for example, the uh, eighth canon of the first ecumenical uh, council uh, talk about the uh, acceptance of priests from uh, Kafars or Navatians schism. Yes, you, if you want, you will uh, check this in the book of uh, rules. So you're here speaking about accept, that accepting priests from the so-called Nikonian church. Yes, yes, yes. It was a problem to, uh, it was a few priests and uh, no bishop, the, there was no bishop in uh, ancient uh, orthodoxy. So uh, there were a loyal, some loyal bishop. Uh, for example, uh, Bishop Alexander of Vyatka or uh, Bishop uh, Pavel uh, of uh, Kolobna, but uh, Bishop Alexander uh, cannot cannot uh, openly openly make uh, make this uh, hierotonia for uh, old believers and uh, Bishop Paul of uh, Kolobna was uh, was died uh, how we know in in prison. So this this uh, is just after the the last call. This is the the second half of the 17th century. Yes, 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 yes. Paul Colonna um, was, was together with Avakum, an opponent of, of this. Yes. Uh, for example, in Vyatka in 1695, 
among priests uh, Theodosius Verrican, one of the last priests at the time who was ordained before the schism, received by chrismation into communion two priests, Alexander from Rilsk and uh, Gregory from Moscow, who were ordained by new ritual bishops establishing in this way a new rule for accepting others. So uh, it, was, uh, it was the first uh, precedent for accepting uh, priest who was ordained uh, by new ritual bishops and uh, with new ritual books. So, so you can, we, we, we could call it a sort of economia, yes, that it was allowed because the survival of the church, in your opinion, was at stake. So this is why they would accept even if they were ordained in the new rite, yes? Yes, yes. It's like an exception, uh, like a special, only for extreme situation, yeah? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> Uh, a, simil a similar situation was present in the Church of Christ during iconoclastic heresy in the 8th, 9th centuries, yes, uh, uh, how we know. Uh, as a proof, we shall write the names of just few priests uh, out of those who preserved the truth of recovered it by uh, sinker uh, rep repentance. This were protopope and martyr of Acum, who was burned to leave uh, monk priests uh, Io Flugovsky and Dosefie Chirsky, Ioasaf Theodosius and Alexander Vietkovsky, Dionysius uh, Shuisky and Trifilius Vologotsky, Sophronios and Alexander Kerzhenetsky. All of this and many other fathers suffered greatly for Christ's faith. Uh, they were subjected to uh, defamation and persecutions, beating and torture. Most of them have been canonized in Russian ancient Orthodox Church. Uh, last years. So if uh, some people uh, talk to us, uh, where, where, is you, where is your saints? So we can, uh, we can answer uh, this, this is uh, a lot. We have a lot of uh, saints uh, and they uh, suffer a lot from, from uh, new uh, right church and state uh, government. So, so just to clarify it for our listeners, the, the, the priests that, that Father Michael just mentioned were the priests that during the reforms and after the reforms, reforms in the 17th century rejected the reforms and therefore they are venerated as saints uh, by, by, by Father Michael's church. And, and these are the people that uh, would become the old believers, so to speak. Uh, uh, right? I think this is, this yes, is yes. the uh, first old exactly. believers, even if, of course, the claim is that the church always, they continued only the church, but after after the schism they became what is known as, as old believers so just to clarify for our listeners that we are speaking about those people those priests who rejected their reforms and were persecuted because of this yes uh, the russian ancient orthodox church was formed uh, from the groups of old believers who uh, insisted on uh, preserving the traditional church structure and hierarchy is opposed to bishop of the groups, uh, priestly groups, but refused to accept the authority of Metropolitan Amrosi Popovich, who converted in uh, 1846 and founded the Belokronitska hierarchy due to some canonical problems with the question of uh, his uh, baptism. Yes, uh, I, uh, I will say two words, not more <laughs> about this. Uh, so according, according to old believers' uh, rules, a priest or bishop uh, or uh, another clergy uh, was uh, accepted to old uh, to uh, old uh, believers church uh, in current rank only after investigation some investigations so uh, uh, it's, it was an investigation about how he was baptized uh, with the three uh, with three emissions and uh, it should be it should be investigated uh, how uh, was baptized uh, a bishop who consecrate, consecrated him yes and, and uh, in this in this case of metropolitan ambrosi uh, they uh, they were uh, no investigation uh, the first question and the second question we have not investigation about this uh, questions so go on Yes, uh, so, so uh, uh, the most old believers in this time don't uh, accept Belokrinitskaya here, actually. And, ju and just to, 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 to uh, Belokrinitskaya is the other priestly, big other priestly old believer church today. Uh, 
and Father Michael is here speaking about how they got their hierarchy from Bishop Ambrosia, which which Father Michael's church then obviously rejected for, for because of the baptism. So for those who are not familiar, there are two big, uh, big, I mean, known and big old believer churches is the Belokonitskaya hierarchy and, and then Father Michael's uh, Russian ancient Orthodox church. So you're not in communion with Belokonitskaya because of this problem with with yes, uh, yes. There were uh, another uh, another questions to Metropolitan Russians, but uh, today is the main uh, question. To, question to Belokrinsky hierarchy is a question of the uh, baptism of Metropolitan Russians. Yes. So uh, yes, and uh, <laughs> I I should I should told this uh, first. Uh, I'm sorry for my English because uh, my first my first uh, my first foreign language. Uh, is German, <laughs> so uh, a long time I have no uh, no practice uh, for my English speaking. So I'm, I'm very sorry. <laughs> May, maybe we can do this interview again in German, so we can have German version as well. <laughs> uh, kind problem. <laughs> yes. Go on. Uh, go on. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Uh, in addition, uh, the Metropolitan was accepted in the communication. Uh, I, to, I uh, talk, ab talk about Metropolitan Rossi. Uh, the Metropolitan was accepted in communication, not by the council of the uh, entire church, uh, Old Believers Church, uh, as it had been uh, envisaged before, uh, but by just a meeting of all ritual communities of Bukovina. So. Uh, Heaven uh, refuted this uh, dubious hierarchy, and St. Orthodox Church remained in the former position and continued to receive uh, pastoral direction from priests who ran away from the New Rital Church. Uh, that is why the name of runaway priest Christians was uh, widely used by our enemies to call our Christians. Also, they have never used and never used this name to call themselves. So we, we don't call uh, ourselves uh, old believers, old ritualists, uh, and others. We call ourselves Orthodox Christians. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and uh, there, is, there is no word uh, old believer and uh, ancient Orthodox in uh, liturgical books that we used. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, uh, and there is no there is no new orthodox and old orthodox yes, yes sure. uh, there is only one orthodox yes and, and so, i think this this word uh, in, in russian they called beglopopovtsi right they would say beglopopovtsi to to your church which is the 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 the, the, the word that indicates that pr you accepted priests who were running away of course you just explained it so it's it's clear uh, yes, uh, first, uh, first, this name uh, was uh, was accepted for all uh, all priestly all believers uh, before before accepting Metropolitan Ambrosi before Belokrinsk uh, hierarchy. Uh, all priestly all believers uh, was Beglopopovs, yes. And uh, after after accepting uh, Ambrosius, as this name as this name uh, was. <clears throat> uh, this name used only by groups who don't accept the Belkarnitska hierarchy. So, so, so at so at this time, when when uh, when those who would become Belkarnitska and when they accepted Metropolitan Ambrosia, you still didn't have bishops, right? You only had priests uh, who would who would come from the New Right Church, but you didn't have your own bishop. Is that is that correct? Uh, yes, yes, and and now and now we have we have full hierarchy, but yes. we will uh, get to that. <laughs> but you, you will soon explain why and yeah, how. By some uh, some some people call us uh, big too. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's a derogatory term, and, and really, uh, I know when I started my research, it came up a lot, but I always thought it was strange, and I I suspected you didn't like it, and, and very clearly, no one likes it. So it's <laughs> we shouldn't we shouldn't use it, you know, for sure. Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, the only true and acceptable name of the, our Christians in, uh, is ancient Orthodox Christians or Orthodox Christians. Spiritual centers uh, were uh, monasteries and communities on Kerzhenets, uh, Nizhny Novgorod district, Irgis, Saratov district, 
Starodubie. Uh, today it's between uh, Russian, Ukraine, and Belarusia. Uh, Tula. In this center took practice priests uh, who run away from the new Rito, uh, church. Uh, so uh, maybe I show some uh, some pictures. Yes, yes. So you, you, yes. You, we will stop seeing us for a while, and you will see for for the Michael's pictures. Please go ahead. Uh, it's it's one of the uh, monasteries, a Komarovsky Skid in uh, Kerzhenets, Nizhny Novgorod district, and uh, here is the grave uh, of uh, Saint uh, Iona, Iona of Kerzhenets. Saint Jonah, Jonas of Kerzhenets. When is this picture from, and when was this monastery established? Uh, it's it's a picture. Uh, it was a, a serial serial of photos. I to give what's uh, it's in in uh, in forests uh, in forests in the Vol forest near Volga. Yeah, called the series. It's all uh, these photos show us uh, old believers' kids. Skits. Skit is a small monastery. And, and when was this skit established? I mean, with what year uh, did they start this skit? Do you know? Uh, I don't, don't know. Uh, but about about uh, 17th, 17th century. Yeah, yeah. So the, the century after, yeah, yeah. At the end, 17th, after yes. the reforms, yeah. After reforms, yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, people, people who uh, run away uh, from uh, persecution, uh, to the uh, in uh, this forest, so and uh, this is uh, most famous runaway priest, uh, Father uh, Pavel Smirnov from Tula. He was uh, uh, the uh, one of the authorities in uh, old believer Christians between all believers Christians in uh, eighteen. 18th century, 18, 19th, 19th century, yes. I'm sorry, 19th, 19th century. He served in Tula. In Tula. Uh, it's a skit called Sharpan, Sharpan skit. And do these uh, do these uh, skits exist uh, to this day, or or uh, are they not, or do they or don't they exist anymore? No, they don't uh, exist anymore because uh, uh, all the skits uh, they were destroyed in the time of uh, Tsar uh, Nikolai the uh, First, and uh, and in the time of Soviet Union, the last the uh, last stands the last uh, people monks from the skits were persecuted. Yes, it's. Uh, Irgis, Irgis monastery, one of the monasteries on Irgis. There are there are many monasteries in uh, these places, in uh, Kerzhenets and Irgis, and many many monasteries. And this uh, these monasteries were spiritual centers uh, with uh, spiritual education. Uh, with uh, the uh, in the centers, priests uh, took their practice. The priests who ran away from the new Rital church, they uh, in the centers they took uh, their practice. Could you could, could you perhaps just briefly explain uh, why these priests would run away? You know, because you speak about all these priests who ran away from the from the new right church, state church, Nikonian church, whatever we want to call it. Could you maybe mention some of the reasons? Uh, it, maybe there's one reason. Maybe there's many. If you could just tell us maybe why mm -hmm. some of them ran away. Uh, it's, uh, it's it's strange, but the most the, the most runaway priests uh, was uh, uh, they they were uh, anti anti old believers missionaries. Yes, and they studied they studied history and teaching uh, of uh, ancient Orthodox Church of uh, the position of old believers, and uh, they understand that this position mm, is right. Yes, and uh, they uh, they go into ancient orthodoxy. Uh, but uh, for this time, it was very hard to be an ancient orthodox priest. Uh, yes, because uh, it, it was uh, there was many persecution. And 
and others. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, communities were practically autonomous and uh, urgent religious uh, issues were sold the only by opinions of the most authoritative members of the congregation, priests, readers, uh, supervising merchants, and senior uh, choir cor singers. Uh, so we can say that the rule, the so uh, the head of of communities was uh, in, in the hands of laity. Yeah, so, uh, so there were a uh, very few priests in this time, and uh, people have seen priests uh, maybe uh, in the, the best way uh, one time in the year, and some parishes have seen priests maybe uh, one time in five years or ten years. Yes, and uh, all. All spiritual life was in uh, in the hands of uh, laymen. So. so, so in some way, is it fair to say that there was no uh, church hierarchy or centralized church hierarchy? Instead, you had all these separate communities who tried to survive, with few priests going here and there whenever they could. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So it was based. It it was uh, maybe I'm wrong, but it seems it was similar maybe to how some of the priestless did, but they didn't have priests, of course. But it was like there was no united by, in one bishop, only united by faith and those priests. Yes, practically, practically, the most uh, parishes, they lived in uh, lit uh, this liturgical liturg liturgical uh, life uh, was uh, like uh, like by priestless. Yeah. Yes, uh, uh, services without a priest, and yeah. uh, some uh, sacraments without a priest. So, I mean, the baptism, yes. Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, some old men baptized, baptized children. And uh, after this, when came uh, priests, they, uh, they added chrismation uh, to this ritual. Yes, and, uh, and uh, the last, last uh, hundred years, uh, I, I think uh, there are many discussion about about the role of uh, laity in church yes and uh, all believers christian is uh, is a good example for non non clericalism yes in this, this in these cases yes yes that's a very very interesting point and 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 it's it's an important point because because the the old russian tradition to my understanding before the reforms was not as clerical as it has become today uh, you know, the, 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 the parish would choose their own priest. Of course, the bishop would have to agree, but, but, but the parish would choose a candidate. And, and, and it wasn't, you know, there was no seminaries like today where, you know, you send, everyone goes to seminary and then, they, and then the bishop decides where they go. Instead, to my understanding, it was, it was you know, the parish choose uh, someone among themselves who they respect. And is that true or, or would you agree? Yes, and uh, and if the parish uh, had a, had equations for uh, for this runaway priests and equations, uh, this parish uh, may uh, not ac accept him. Yeah. They told we don't accept you. Go away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but but I I even meant before even the reforms. You know, before before Nicanian reforms, the parish still had a lot of power by themselves. You know, to choose their own priests before the schism i mean you know before before the new ah, yes yeah yes it's, it's true it's true yeah. yes and and in in ancient orthodox christianity uh, this tradition lives lives uh, live live force yes i yes. think yes like uh, it's it's like like a tradition of uh, old novgorod it's like republic it's a later republican tradition Yes, it's, it's a very interesting uh, thing for our listeners to, to, to understand, because I think many people in the West, they are, they are very familiar, for instance, with the Roman Catholic model, you know, mm. or even modern Orthodox model. And they don't realize that, that the laity in the Orthodox tradition always had a lot to say. You know, it was always, the church was always bishops, priests, and people. You know, I think very often in, in the Western Christian mind, 
it's like the church is priests and bishops. And then people, uh, you know, they, they will listen. But in, in orthodoxy, traditionally, I mean, even if we look at, for instance, Mark of Ephesus, St. Mark of Ephesus, you know, when he rejected the council, he came home. He was one of the few people who rejected the union with Rome, but all the people agreed with him, you know, and the people of the church. So I think it's, it's beautiful that the old believers, they, they preserve this, this ancient. Yes, yes, that's a good, good example. Ancient ecclesiology, you know, I would say, a traditional ecclesiology. You know? I think the other one is more Western. It's more pa papistic almost, you know. Yeah. Sorry, go on. That's true. Uh, so on April uh, 17th, uh, 1905, Emperor Nicholas II signed a document which uh, was very progressive for the time. His own imperial edict <clears throat> of uh, fundamentals of religious tolerance, which actually declared the freedom of religion. Our ancestors uh, made several at at attempts to find a lawful ancient Orthodox bishop. To this end, starting yet from the first decade of the uh, 18th century, godly ancient Orthodox Christians had been in search of such hierarchs. Authorized delegations from ancient Orthodox communities traveled to Greece, uh, the Caucasus, the Middle and Far East, even to Africa to find them, which would meet the fully all Orthodox canonical requirements and would wish to join the ancient uh, orthodoxy not for uh, mundane expectations, but first of all, for the uh, purpose of saving his own soul. Uh, so uh, it was a, there was a, a, a many uh, old, orthodox, old orthodox, ancient orthodox Christians trying always to, they tried to find a bishop. Uh, they understood, understood that this situation without, without full hierarchy, uh, it's, it's not normal. Yes, and uh, first, first they tried to find a uh, full Orthodox bishop that don't uh, in communion with uh, Nikonian churches. Yes, with Nikonian uh, this, uh, church in Greece and, and other churches. Yes, but they uh, don't find this. Uh, and uh, they decided to, uh, to find a bishop uh, who will, uh, who will uh, ent enter, enter to ancient Orthodox Church, who will accept, who will accept ancient Orthodoxy uh, to, uh, for the, uh, of the case of the case of uh, salvation of his soul. Could you, could so, you just quickly tell us? Okay, go on. Sorry, finish. Please finish. <laughs> yes. Uh, so uh, they they will find uh, they uh, wanted to find uh, not uh, this uh, bishop uh, like the oh you have no bishop so I will be bishop. Uh, no, uh, they will find this man who uh, will see in Orthodox uh, ancient Orthodox Christianity the true Orthodoxy. Uh, and uh, and uh, accepted from all heart and soul to to save it. And the and the criteria uh, they would use, of course, apart from this spiritual criteria, is the fact that he had to be baptized with free full immersions. Yes. Uh, yes. 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 Okay. Yes. And the and the bishop that made him priest also. Yes, yes, on, on these conditions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so on, this, only, yes. Mm -hmm. only so this on must this. Have been, yeah, yeah. So this must have been uh, rather difficult, right? To find, to be sure even, because it's difficult to be sure only for him, but even for the bishop that made him priest, to be sure that he was baptized with full immersions, it must be very difficult. Uh, you know, you know, in that time, it was not very difficult. Okay. Because uh, uh, if, uh, how, how we know, in in whole in central Russia, uh, in central in central Russia and Ukraine, uh, I don't mean the uh, West Ukraine, uh, the territories uh, near uh, near uh, Uniats and Catholics. Yes, in, in Ukraine, uh, all always baptized with free immersion. Yeah, if you know, you know Dmitry Rostovsky, Dmitry Tuptalo, 
Yes, he he was uh, he was born near Kiev, in Kiev uh, district. He was born in Kiev district, and in uh, old believer and ancient Orthodox Christians accepted priests who uh, was ordained by Dmitry Rostovsky. Yes, because he was baptized in uh, this full immersion. Yes, there, was, uh, there were no questions for him. Yes, questions was only for Ukraine, for Belarusia, yes, Ukraine, Belarusia, yes, and uh, for Greeks. Because uh, uh, if you know uh, from history, uh, in the middle of, uh, uh, of 17th century, uh, so uh, here among Karseni Sukhanov, Karseni Sukhanov, uh, he uh, was in the uh, Orthodox East in, in Greece, in Athos. He visited these uh, places and uh, he had a discussion with hierarchs about, about traditions uh, of, of these churches. Yes, and uh, he, uh, he writes a uh, little book, Proskinitarion, and he wrote uh, that Greeks baptized without full immersion. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, yes. And for Greeks, it was, there were a uh, question to accept uh, priests from Greek church. So, yes. And uh, it, was, it was difficult because because uh, in this time, bishops and priests, uh, they was uh, like, uh, um, like, <laughs> I forget this word. Uh, uh, they uh, was like a clerks, yes, of synodal church. And uh, if uh, priest goes to old orthodox and bishop, yes, and uh, all all mites of uh, synodal church uh, will go into uh, to, to to take him to arrest at him and other persecutions yes this way it was uh, difficult to find this uh, people who was ready for uh, for this you know yes okay uh, okay so uh I speak, I speak, I speak. It was necessary to summon a council of the entire church. The organization work on summoning of such council, uh, thanks to uh, efforts of numerous advocates of ancient godliness soon brought the successful result. The first all Russian Congress of ancient Orthodox Christians opened in Nizhny Novgorod in May, 1908. Uh, representatives of all centers of the ancient Orthodox attended this Congress. Also, there were representatives from ancient Orthodox communities of uh, Turkey and Romania. Of special importance was the fact that the chapel old ritualist of the Urals also participated in this Congress. Uh, so, uh, chapel old ritualists, uh, it was, yes, they, they are now, and uh, it's uh, the same big group of uh, who lost uh, who lost priests in uh, uh, during the persecution of Nikolai the first in the middle of uh, of uh, 18th century yes in Ural in Siberia uh, they they uh, 19th yes they 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 stopped they stopped to accept priests yes. because because uh, they I have no, have no, oh, it's right. have no uh, opportunity, possibility to ac accept priests that uh, he, uh, he called Orthodox. But uh, I wanted to ask you this, this uh, council in 1908, uh, was mm -hmm. it also attended by Belokrenitskaya or was it? No, 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 no. It was only those people who were part of this community. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Uh, it was so at, this, at, at this point, it was already clear distinction, yes? yes, between you and them. Okay. 
it was outstanding for the number of persons who attended it. Uh, 500 delegates with 200 delegates with the right of a, a deciding vote. The Congress ruled on establishment of the All Russian Brotherhood with the Council Institute in the structure of this management body to provide organizational and administrative management over ancient Orthodox communities for the time of absence of bishops. Yes, in the time of, uh, of absence of bishops, yes, uh, laymen. Uh, <clears throat> organized all uh, church life yeah i mean it's like the church continued but without bishops so, so the lay people had to of course step up yes yeah. yes uh, the charter uh, the charter of the all russian brotherhood designed by a commission specially elected at the congress was also approved uh, unanimously further on the brotherhood council of uh, 30 people was elected so that the council would include one or two authorized persons from every more or less uh, sub uh, substantial area of residence of ancient orthodox christians later upon the ruling of the uh, third all russian ancient orthodox congress it was 19 uh, the brotherhood was officially renamed to the all russian ancient orthodox brotherhood named after St. Nicholas. Institution of the All Russian Brotherhood was not something new. The history of the Church of Christ already, already there, were, uh, there were periods when the church organization and administrative body for objective reasons was headed by priests and godly laymen. The last historic example in favor of institution of the Brotherhood of Ancient Orthodox Christians, which accepted priests from Greek Russian Church, that was the official name of confession, uh, Ancient Orthodox Christians, which accepted priests from the Greek Russian Church, uh, was the positive experience of West Russian Orthodox Brotherhoods of the 15th, uh, 16th centuries in the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth. At the time, Orthodox Brotherhood successfully uh, repelled attacks of Huniats, Catholics, Protestants, anti Trinitarians, and other heretical communities. <clears throat> Besides, this Brotherhood's been a, a form of preservation of traditions of the Holy Russian, of the Holy Russia, uh, acted as advocates of Orthodox Christians to civil rulers uh, of the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth in secular issues. No less important and uh, deceive act of the first All Russian Congress was the positive ruling on search of a bishop sharing outlooks of ancient Orthodox Christians uh, from cathedral, not retired, new ritual bishops. Yes, they decided uh, accepted priests, uh, uh, cathedral priest, or cathedral bishop, uh, not retired bishop. From uh, 1918 to 1923, the ancient Orthodox Church lived uh, through all horrors of the civil war, destruction, and communist terror. At this time, all religious confessions suffered greatly from a uh, militant atheism regime. The formerly unshakable ruling church, this patriarch Tichon, elected by the council, uh, ceased to exist as a single body having fallen into several parts and numerous divisions. It seems that the end of the time came as it so much uh, resembled the advent of Antichrist, of Antichrist. However, the most horrible uh, 30, 40 years of the 20th century were still ahead. So uh, some, some pictures I will show. Uh, it's the Presidium of uh, First Congress. Uh, in the center is uh, Nikolai Alexandrovich Bugrov, He's a great merchant. This is 1908, yes? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay. And uh, this is our, uh, our historical cathedral in Moscow. 
St. Nicholas Cathedral. Uh, it's uh, near near uh, near Rogorsky Cemetery. Not on the cemetery, but uh, but near on uh, Rogorsky Street. On third third, uh, this uh, the street called uh, Third Rogorsky Street, and now it's uh, another had another name. And today is this. And uh, there are offices now in our historical cathedral in Moscow. Uh, so, so this green uh, green building is what was the church before? Yes. 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 And this is the church. Ah, yeah, yeah. And then after communism, they, they made it into offices. Yes. 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 Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So <clears throat> according to divine providence during the time of the new uh, economic policy, uh, when the uh, atrocities uh, of the Reds and anar anarchy terror some, somewhat uh, subsided, namely on November the 1st, 1923, in the city of Saratov, in an ancient Orthodox church named after uh, St. Martyr Dmitry Solunsky, an event of the greatest importance for ancient Orthodox Church occurred. An archpriest of this church, priest Nicholas, Nikola Tikhomirov, by anointment, by anointment, accepted Archbishop of Saratov Nikola Poznev, who was formerly under renovated ritual supreme uh, church management to the Church uh, of Christ. Bishop Nikola was ordained uh, as a bishop in 1921 before the new ritual church was divided into the renovated part and the old church part. Uh, Those long difficult and sorrowful search of a bishop who would be uh, of like minded to instant Orthodox church brought fruit with God's help. So uh, 4th November 1923 was accepted uh, Archbishop Nikola Poznev uh, of Saratov. So, picture. yes. And, and for those for those that don't know uh, what the Renovanist Church was, the, uh, you know, during during the the Russian Revolution and after the Moscow uh, Patriarchate was, uh, you know, they had uh, their own schism. One might say, where a part of the church left and would become what is called uh, Renovationists. And um, I, I, one, one moment, there is, uh, there is no Moscow Patriarchate in such, you know, this, this... I mean, after 1917, there was. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. This, yeah. yes. So I, I meant after, after the revolution, yes. yeah. So yeah, please go on, please go on. Yes, uh, here on this picture, uh, it's a photo of uh, 1929, after uh, accepting, after chrismation, the second bishop. Stefan Ostorguev, and after consecration of uh, Bishop Pansofi Ivle. In the center is uh, Archbishop Nicola. And, and a Bishop Stefan. Uh, yes, Bishop Stefan. Where did he come from? from also from this renovationist? Uh, no, no. 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 <sighs> uh... We, 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 we should, uh, we should uh, come, uh, come back. Okay, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. And on December, on uh, December uh, 19th, uh, 1923, the Council of Ancient Orthodox, Church, Orthodox Christians from communities of the Volga region and Central Russia was held, which upon a consideration of documents uh, confir confirming Bishop Nicholas correct baptism and ordination ruled to find his joining canonically immaculate and decreed to name him ever after as Bishop of Moscow, Saratov, and all Russia of ancient Orthodox Christians. In his speech, Bishop Nicola said uh, as follows. And what did he say? During my entire life, I have searched for just one thing to find the truth and finally I have found it only in our Lord Jesus Christ and in his gospel teaching as well as in writing and traditions of holy apostles. 
Such truth is kept integral and pure only in the single apostolic church established by Christ himself. And now this divine truth is kept only by the old ritual church. That is why, by the end of my life, I decided to join you old ritualists. In, in conclusion, I wish that the old ritual church shall keep this uh, treasure as it has kept it before, in its purity and integrity. And that old ritualists shall help me in doing so while I shall try to help them to keep this divine truth in purity and integrity. And I call, up, and I call upon all old ritualists to pray studiously to our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So uh, we can see, we can see a uh, uh, synchrony of Archbishop Nicola. Yes. Uh, he uh, he told before council that he that he go, goes to uh, ancient Orthodox Church not for uh, not for money not for mighty and uh, and with uh, but with a uh, was willing to to save his soul and to keep uh, to uh, keep the uh, divine truth in purity and integrity. So. He said he said this about himself. So he that's, uh, that, that's how that's how um, your hierarchy was uh, established, or you would say restored through uh, uh, through him, and then later through Bishop uh, Stefan. Uh, that's how you were able to get bishops, and then later ordained yes. priests. Yeah. Yes. And unlike and unlike Belokoninskaya, uh, you are sure that he was baptized with three full immersions. All of them, both Stefan and and uh, Nicola, Bishop, Bishop. Yes, there uh, there the, the were uh, investigations, investigation, and they come to a place uh, where I was born, uh, Archbishop Nicola. It's in uh, Astrakhanskaya district, district of Astrakhan. I, I've been there. Yes, here. Uh, here, here was only uh, only try immersion uh, baptism always, and the uh, uh, one one of the bishop, one of the bishop consecrated as bishop bishop Nikola Poznev, uh, was a bishop from Edinaversi. It was Edinaversi bishop, one of the Mindestan Mindestans, uh, one of bishop was was, uh, uh, was baptized with free immersion. Yes. Uh, yes. 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 Perhaps. Uh, it, it, do you have? Do you have more? Or otherwise, we could maybe jump to some questions. It's up to you. How, how much more do you have? Uh, because I think uh, during the questions, uh, many aspects of modern uh, aspects of your church will come up as well. So unless unless you have something more important, maybe we could jump to questions where surely we will we will discuss uh, the modern situation and, and things like that it's up to you uh so and the uh, i uh, i say about the second bishop yes yeah yes uh, stefan yeah yes yes um <clears throat> on the september 1929 in moscow cathedral church bishop nicola assisted by uh, archimandrit pansofius Ivlev, accepted in the ancient Orthodox church by chrismation bishop roginsky stefan rostorgoy uh, bishop stefan who was born and baptized by old ritual community which admitted uh, hierarchic jurisdiction of the moscow patriarchate from edinaveria was ordained in the city of uh, sapki on july 1928 by acting head of UFA, a new ritual, Archidiocese, Veniamin Troitsky, Bishop of Birsk, and Rufin Brehov, Bishop of Sadki. So he was consecrated, uh, Bishop Stefan was consecrated in the by group of uh, Archbishop Andrei Uchtomsky. It was uh, it was a group of independent uh, bishops who don't accept it. Declare, declaration of uh, of Metropolit Sergei Stargorovsky. Yeah, uh, so it's uh, they they known in church history they known as a true Orthodox Christian movement, and uh, so. 
yes, and uh, from this group was uh, was uh, Bishop uh, Bishop Stefan. Yes. So and the, uh, in in few days in few days in uh, Moscow uh, Cathedral Church, Archbishop Nikola, assisted by Stefan, Bishop of Ural and Bugoruslan, ordained the first after the church uh, schism ancient Orthodox Bishop and Sophius Ivlev to in you establish it Archdiocese of Rostov and Kursk. Yes, and uh, we, uh, we can see this on photo. Yes, this photo after ordination of Bishop Pansofis. Here is uh, Archbishop Nicola in the center, and so right from him is uh, Bishop Stefan and Bishop Pansofis to the left side. Yes. And uh, there is both Archbishop Stefan and Bishop Pansofius. Uh, they died. They died from persecution of communists, and uh, they were in Council 2000, 2007. Uh, they has been have been canonized in ancient. Orthodox Church, like here martyrs. Yes, and this historical photo from this moment too. It's Archbishop Nicola and others, clergy and laymen, in Moscow. Yes, it's uh, Bishop Filaret Harlamov of Sverdlovsk. He died in prison. To uh, Bishop Pavel of Gorodets, he died in prison. Yes, and uh, it's a grave of uh, Archbishop Mikhail, Michael, Mikhail Kochetov. Yes, uh, and uh, some words I would to say about, about his life. It's Archbishop Mikhail. Uh, Archbishop Mikhail uh, headed the church at the time which was the most difficult for Christians. Particularly, particularly uh, all clergymen were undercover. Real hunting started against Archbishop Mikhail. Which, However, which year? Could you just tell us which year he was bishop? It's uh, year 1938. Okay, so we're in the middle of persecution, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Uh, however, by God's grace, the godless failed to arrest Archbishop Mikhail. Also, they followed him for many years uh, without revealing himself to the secular uh, authorities. Just like Saint Eusebius of Samosata, Archbishop Mikhail took over his cassock, clad himself in soldier's garb, and traveled around the country in secret from one community to another, executing his archbishop duties. Confirming Christians in their faith and ordering ancient Orthodox clergymen, the authorities could hardly could, could hardly notice this in a conspicuous, small, harmless old man who, together with the Church of Christ, carried on his shoulders all the horrors of Stalinist persecution. Yes, it was a, it was a apogee, apogee of apogee of Stalinist persecution these years. Uh, and in April uh, the 6th, 1944, on the eve of the Annunciation, on the eve of the Annunciation, as Archbishop Mikhail peacefully departed to God. The Archbishop was uh, buried in the cemetery of Malinovsky Monastery, Nizhny Novgorod district, where he received his religious education since he was uh, 14 years old. And this is uh, service on the grave uh, of Archbishop Mikhail. Yes. And this is, uh, this is Archbishop, uh, as Archbishop Ioan Kalinin, this clergy in, in Moscow. Yes. We, are, we are speaking too long today, yes? <laughs> I think I speak too long. Oh, it's okay. I, th I think uh, it's we, okay. 
we, we could we could we could jump into questions because I think a lot of a lot of things you you would like to speak about will also be addressed when you answer, you know, mm -hmm. especially about modern uh, modern situation. I think we have some interesting questions. So, so yes. if, if it's okay for you, we could we could uh, we could do the questions now. Okay. And then, and then, if you have some pictures that are uh, fitting for the for the questions, then you you of course show them. Mm. If that's okay with you. Okay. Okay. Because I think many people are they, they are interested in your history, but they would probably also like to know you know some some things about today or or more modern modern times. Yes. Yes. Of course. Yes. Uh, and, uh, uh, and I. Uh, I just I just should to uh, talk about uh, today's uh, being of our church, and uh, that's on on uh, on third March. It's uh, two thousand two. In the uh, ancient Orthodox Church was restored the rank of the Patriarch in our church. Yes, the council elected Archbishop Alexander, the ancient Orthodox Church Patriarch of Moscow and all Russia. For the first time during the last uh, three and uh, half centuries, yeah. So our uh, our our head bishop, yes, he called uh, he he uh, had the status of uh, patriarch of Moscow and all Russia and Saint Orthodox Christians. Yes. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. Thank you. <laughs> Emma Bitter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you know, j just quickly, uh, just some some simple questions first. If you, if you can give us just some statistics about how many people, if it's possible, because I know it, it might be difficult, but how many people are today members of, of of your community, and how many how many bishops do you have, for instance? Uh, yes, uh, today, uh, Ancient Orthodox Church includes uh, eleven dioceses, uh, nine bishops, about hundred priests about uh, 120 uh, parishes, uh, one seminary, uh, Supreme Ancient Orthodox Religious School, and uh, five monasteries. Uh, one of the monasteries is for, for men and other four is for women. And how many, how many faithful are registered in the, in the, in the, in the communities? Do we, we, don't, we don't have such information about the number of faithful. Uh, yeah. I, think, I think about uh, about about uh, seven seven hundred about seven hundred thousands about the, about one million about one million okay okay yeah okay um, and another question that we, that I wanted to ask you you know you spoke about uh, baptism as a, as you know the, the requirement when we're looking for for bishops and, and overall the requirement for free full emergence, which yes, I think yes. is very clearly uh, an ancient practice. However, I wanted to ask you about, you know, the section in the Didache where, where, mm -hmm. where the teaching allows other baptism in cases of emergency, right? Mm -hmm. And yes. why, why would old believers reject, uh, reject this in these situations? Like, why, why wouldn't they accept, for instance, those baptism as emergency? You know, I'm, I'm, I want to hear why why, what, what, why, why they won't? Because it's yes, not only uh, your group. I think most old believer groups, uh, they, they would agree with you. Uh, I think it's not true, because uh, we uh, we don't reject uh, clinical baptism. Yes, so uh, we do this because uh, clinical baptism. Uh, we, uh, we what do you mean by clinical? Clinical, clinical in extreme situation. Mm. Uh, Without without full immersion, yes, yes it's okay, possible. Yes. Yes. It's possible to baptize to baptize men in in real critical dangerous for life situation without immersion. Yes, we uh, we have some some cases. Yeah, of this course. and and so now I know about these cases in our church too. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yes, uh, but uh, but uh, this is uh, this is uh, irregular situations. Yes, it's not a, it's a not a normal. Yeah. Yes, and uh, if uh, if you if you if you read the uh, Catechismus of Metropolit Philaret, yes, how you can 
uh, how you uh, how you what what you will see about baptism. Mm -hmm. Baptism is a sacrament, la la la, in three immersions. Yes, and the councils of Russian Church have spoken about this. And, uh, we uh, we have our practice according to rules of fifties uh, fifties. 50 rule of holy apostles and yes and rules of council uh, council by patriarch Hilaret in 1621 uh, and this uh, rules <sighs> talk us to baptized baptized uh, this, uh, people who was uh, baptized without immersion yes uh, they allowed to baptize them Okay, so it's in normal, normal, normal. It's it's a normal way of uh, of holy baptism. Yes, and not only old believers here are talking about this. You know that uh, Luka Voinesinetsky, Luka Luka of Saints, Luka of Krim, yes, and New Italian saint. Uh, they they wrote a brief to priests and his diocese. Yes, with the. Uh, instructions yes with instructions to uh, to baptize only with uh, free emissions yeah yeah okay thank you uh another question uh, is obviously you made very clear your your positions on baptism and that leads to the, the another question what is your i would say view or relation with with other people that call them health christians so for instance your relation to Belokranitskaya, what, what is your relation to them, if I might ask? The other old believer priestly group, like, what is your view and relation to them? There's no intercommunion between you, no. There is no, there is no. Uh, but in, in, this, uh, in the same time, uh, we, have no, we have no final solution for this question. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, there, is, uh, there is a commission in our church who investigated the question about the Lukrinitska hierarchy, yes, and uh, before before a final before final solution, we accept uh, them uh, with resignation. Okay, so you accept their baptism, but you accept the yes. resignation. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. And then the next question, then, what is your then relationship with with modern Moscow Patriarchate, for instance, the Nikonians? You would you would say. Is it, uh, ha, ha, what is your view on them? Are they Christian or they're not? Does it depend on how they were baptized? Maybe you could explain your position. Mm, it's, uh, our relationships is now is normal. It's uh, better than a than few years, a few hundred years before. Thank God. Uh, yes, uh, but, uh, but we accept, we accept uh, it's, uh, <sighs> It's tragically, but uh, now in uh, Russian Orthodox Church, I can say that a few a few priests baptized with the full uh, immersions. Yes, and now uh, there are many bishops who was baptized. You know, for example, bishops of uh, our age. Yes, uh, about uh, 35, uh, 40 years old. And uh, all these bishops were was baptized in without full immersion, yes, and uh, it's uh, it's normal for for them. So 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 basically, you don't see them as Christians. Those that, that were not oh. baptized with full, I mean, not 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 now Moscow Patriarch. Generally speaking, those that are not baptized with free full immersions, you 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 would baptize again if they come to you. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And and, and the, uh, I can say that in the. In the most situations now, uh, people who come to ancient Orthodox Church from Moscow, Potterhead, uh, and priests. Uh, I can I know I know only two priests uh, who was accepted last years in the current rank. Mm -hmm. Yes, and the, uh, only two priests and uh, okay. other yes other people who came, uh, they have no. Uh, have no baptized baptism with three immersions. Yes. 
Okay, uh, it's clear. Thank you. So that that means that I, I don't have to even ask about Catholics and Protestants because it, it's uh, it's it's same stance, it's same policy, so to speak. Uh, yes, but but we uh, we are looking for all people, all people who believe in Christ. Uh, we are looking with brotherhood, with uh, love, and uh, we, we pray about uh, about just people, and uh, so. Uh, so I I want to to talk one mm-hmm. one moment, please. Mm-hmm. So while while you look, I can just briefly briefly you know yes, make, yes, make yes. the conclusion that that for you know for our listeners that uh, in in old believers among old believers or as Father Michael would say among the Orthodox. Um, simply the question of baptism is a vital question and 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 this is this is non-negotiable uh, and and this is this is held by all all what we would call old believers or what you would say orthodox and this is a, a big uh, big stumbling block towards any speak of unity of of, of communion uh, the question of baptism, I think it's fair to say, is now the biggest problem. Would you agree that this is the biggest problem now between, let's say, Nikonians and old believers, generally speaking? It's baptism, first and foremost, now, today. Would you agree? Uh, yes, and uh, I will to say that uh, one bishop from uh, from uh, group of Sergei Stargorovsky uh, visited our council in 1928, uh, Archbishop Juvenali Maslowski, as an as an official representative of uh, Synodic Metropolitan Sergius, uh, the uh, purpose of this visit was quite unusual. On behalf of the New Ritual Church, Bishop Juvenali visited our council to offer church unification through condemnation by new ritualists of Patriarch Nikon and uh, heresies brought by him into the churches. Uh, Juvenali said that everything in the ancient Orthodox Church was just were, uh, used and correct, and that no canonical rules were violated. Yes, that said the uh, official representative of uh, Sergei Stargorovsky said on our council in 1928. Yes, they, they, uh, we, we, don't, uh, we don't invited him. He come to us and say this. Yeah, yeah. There is, there is all, all, all is, all is, uh, all is good. He say to us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting. So, so I would think that um, do you have any relations at all with with the priestless, or or it's only brotherly relations like with everyone else, the priestless old believers? The priestless, uh, yes. Uh, uh, I told today. I uh, have spoken today about chapel, uh, chapel. Uh-huh. Old believers, yes, they was priestly, and uh, after nineteenth uh, nineteenth century, after middle of the nineteenth century, they become um, practically uh, priestless. Yes, not not uh, dogmatically, uh, but practically, they are priestless, and they uh, they looking for us mm-hmm. with with the hope. Yes, and many of this uh, many of this. Chapel old believers came came to uh, to our church mm. invited to our church and we uh, we accepted them only uh, with uh, with chrismation mm. yes like uh, we accepted them like our Christians who was uh, baptized without priests okay yeah yeah I understand I understand yes and and, and another question. Um, in this age of of ecumenism, which you know I don't like this word. But have you engaged in dialogue with any with any other groups or with any other churches uh, to to try to establish communion? Because I read uh, one of your um, one of your recent councils on the agenda. I read on the website that there was some discussions with one Greek old calendarist group. Is that something you can comment about, or or because it was it was public on the on the website, so that's why. Uh, I'm yes, only uh, only 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 a little. Uh, I have no. Uh... I have no direct uh, involvement. Part, yeah, yeah, yeah. part in this uh, in this dialogue, but I know uh, something about. So it's a dialogue with uh, with a, a sign of sign of uh, 
of uh, metropolit uh, Matthew. Matt, mm -hmm. uh, Matthew, 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 yeah. Yes, yes. A metropolit uh, from ancestors. Or not ancestors. Ah, no, not ancestors, uh, but so, so I'm looking. We are here speaking about uh, uh, successors. It's a successors of Metropolit Matfei of Brucefian. Okay, so for those, for those who are not aware, uh, because of the calendar change in Greece, yes, yes. hundred years ago, some groups uh, they divided among themselves. They, they many schisms happened, and we are now speaking about one of these groups that Father Michael's church has have had okay. some dialogue with. Uh, first, uh, first it was a group uh, of uh, Metropolit Kirik. Mm -hmm. And now uh, there are some processes inside these groups, mm -hmm. but now it's a synod of uh, Metropolit Pachomius. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a uh, Archbishop of Athens and uh, all Greece uh, of uh, Gnosius Orthodox mm -hmm. is the name. Yes, and uh, we have a good relations, and uh, we uh, now it's not an active phase, pass as a dialogue. Yes, because uh, of the pandemic and and other cases. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, but from from the both sides, uh, there is a, a very good, very good intention, mm -hmm. intention to. To have this, uh, to have this uh, dialogue, mm -hmm. yes, and we have we have the same platform. It's uh, free baptism, with free mission, and uh, keeping holy tradition on uh, councils and uh, holy fathers, and we don't uh, accept in any forms of ecumenism. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so it's a, it's a base, it's a platform, it's a fundamentum. Mm -hmm for our dialogue and uh, a lot of position uh, uh, between us are the same yes so we, we have we have uh, we, now we, we have we have no uh, communion now but uh, maybe it's uh, god's will uh, maybe later it's it's maybe it's will would be possible one, one day but uh, but today uh, today it's uh, not time to speak about this no. Yes, yes, I understand. Uh, so, so you 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 can't say what the biggest obstacle is. Do you, like is is there one big obstacle, or uh, or you don't want to speak about that now? Mm. We are we are very friendly with this group, since this group are, is very friendly yeah, to us. Uh, it's it's great because, because for we, me, go on, go on. And we uh, we will we will see how. Uh, how uh, will be the fruits of our dialogue? Yeah, because for, for me, my, my first reaction, like just my own reaction, like I think you would agree on most things except for fingers, you know, how, how you make sign of the cross, knowing this is how I know <clears throat> the Greeks, that this could be a problem. So I'm very... Yes, for, uh, yes it's, it's a, a sign of the cross. It's a, it's a big problem for... Uh, they. Uh, it's not a problem to accept a uh, sign of the cross with two fingers. Yeah. Uh, it's not a problem. Yes, but it's a problem to not uh, accept it uh, in you, sign of the cross with three fingers. Yeah. Yes, yeah. because it's on, usually in, in practice, in liturgical practice of the communities. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, it's a, it's a problem. Yes, yes, yes. No, because that, that was the main thought. Because in my mind, you would agree on everything except except for fingers, basically. I think it, it sounds almost funny, but it's very serious, of course. But yeah, fingers is, is, is sadly, sadly the problem. Okay, Father, I, I think that I feel very satisfied with, with, with these questions. And I want to thank you for, for coming on and, and speaking about the history, which is very complex yet you did you did a very good job in explaining and, and i have i have some photos that i will to show okay yes quickly Bye, -bye. yes quickly to show some uh, uh it's a holy concert we, we are we are now seeing your uh, desktop ah. i'm sorry i'm sorry Wait a, wait a second.
no worries, no worries. We have time. One minute here or there, it's it's no it's no problem. Yeah, yes. perfect, perfect. Yes, uh, on uh, this photo, uh, there are uh, three archbishops. Yes, uh, Archbishop Pavel in the middle, uh, and the uh, protodiakon, protodiakon Guri Antonov, uh, he will be Archbishop Gennady, and after him, uh, Archbishop, uh, Archbishop Aristarch, and in this photo, uh, Arch Archpriest Athanasius. Yes, uh, he was uh, uh, he was a man of holy life. He was a priest more than uh, fifty years of his life. He was a priest, and he had thousands of spiritual children. Uh, and, uh, and now many children, many his spiritual children, children, I remember him as a saint. So it's uh, Archbishop Gennady. No, oh, it's. Uh, uh, do you see my cursor or not? Only. Uh, yeah, yeah, we see it. Yeah, you're pointing at the man to the point. left. Yes, it's. Uh, look, it's it's a young father Maxim. Ah. Uh -huh. I have just, met. just, just, just ornate as a priest. Yes, I have met Father Maxim. Yes, Father Maxim. Yes. Uh, yes, and the Archbishop Gennadios. And uh, here is a young, young lector, lesser young lector, Chites. It's uh, His Holiness Patriarch Alexander now mm. on this photo. Yes. Uh, it, it, it's year 1984. So, so I want to ask you, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I think my mark. Yes, yes, yes. I want to ask you, uh, Archbishop uh, Aristark. Yes. Uh, his name was Kalinin, and Patriarch yes. Alexander is also Kalinin, or their fa yes. or their family. Uh, yes, uh, and uh, uh, was Archbishop uh, Ioan Kalinin. What was? Uh, yes, yeah. I see. Yes, yes. it's uh, Archbishop Ioan Kalinin, and here's uh, Diakon uh, Diakon Athanasius Kalinin. So they're the same family, as yes? they come from the same. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, Archbishop uh, Ioan Kalinin was a father. Of father of uh, uh, Athanasius, Athanasius Kalinin, mm -hmm. yes, uh, and before he became bishop, of course. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes, yes. and uh, and uh, grandfather, grandfather uh, for of our patriarch uh, was a brother of Father uh, Athanasius. Okay, yes. So I understand. Yeah, that, that's why the same the same last name. Yes. Yes. Maybe you can show us uh, one or two modern pictures. Yes, uh, yes, yes. And then uh, Archbishop Aristar. It's His Holiness Patriarch Alexander. It's a patriarchal service in Moscow Cathedral. It's uh, this one young priest. I, I know this priest. Yes. <laughs> Uh, here is the last, the last, uh, the photo of the last week from our uh, ancient Orthodox youth camp. The uh, the last last year we didn't have it because mm -hmm. uh, of pandemia, yes. And uh, this year and uh, before, in Swite, uh, this is a council, mm -hmm. council of the church. Yes, uh, it's photo of. Uh, 2019. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's the first uh, use. This year was the second use camp, and it's uh, it's the first use mm -hmm. camp. It's, it's the bishops of ancient Orthodox Church. It's Moscow, Moscow Pokrov Cathedral on Novokuznetsky Street. I have visited. I, I, I can spoil. I, I have been there many times. Yes. And the old believers' icons. Yes, beautiful icons. It's from Vietka, mm -hmm. one of the spiritual centers. And uh, today it's uh, Gomel, Gomel district in Belarus. Okay. 
<clears throat> so that's all. Uh, that's all I want to to show you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, willingness to come on and your your friendly uh, uh, your friendly mood towards us and towards everyone else. I think it's important, like I mentioned in the beginning, that uh, we allow people to speak for themselves. You know. And, and and to to explain their history by themselves because I think it's it's very very important. Yes, uh, thank you for inviting me, and uh, I will to say that uh, anybody who who are interested in uh, history or teaching of ancient Orthodox Church, uh, you can uh, find me on Facebook and write me, to ask me, uh, ask me any question you want to ask. Okay, thank you, Father. And maybe you can be on some other time. Uh, we can maybe, for if 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 we get enough questions uh, from people, uh, we could maybe have you on again and simply ask questions. If if there will be many people that ask questions, we could maybe do that as well. Simply like a Q and A with you. Yes, sure. Let, sure. Let's see. Let's see how how many people will will send questions. But either way, thank you, Father. Uh, thank you thank all you, for, for for listening and watching. It's been a long episode, but I think it's worth it. And until next time, all the best and God bless.